Ae te hui tēnā tātā katoa. A tēnei te hoki mai. A i tā maki makaura me te, me te rongo anoho ki te kororo mo te, te āhotanga o te mate ko tau ki runga i te kāhui areki. A, ko tō mai rangi tērā. A, ka mutu ko te hāhi katorika e tangi nei. Pā hina re tei. A, tēnei te heri mai. Ngā mate huho te motu. Ka whakatakato hi ki mui a kūtou i tēnei rā, i a tātou i tēnei rā. Me te kiatu, koutou i te pō e moi, e moi, e moi. Tātou. Tātou e kawe nei ngā tūmuna ko te ao Māori, a ngā rā kai mui te aro. Tēnā kūtou, tēnā kūtou. Kia ora tātou katoa. Kia ora everyone. Thank you for that, uh, thank you for that introduction. Uh, I'll pay you later. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where you got that script from, but um, I'm very uh, appreciative of those, uh, those, those that quarter away. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I don't necessarily take all the credit for that, but thank you very much. Spent a part about Taranaki, fair enough. Um, <laughs> it's nice to be here. Can I start by uh, um, Dame Tariana, Tenagwe? Ta mai hana. Na koro te kau papi fakara ki tona tima tanga mai tona oro kanga mai. Ko ne tua ki te fai fai haringa mahi o tina i koro i te wai i koro. Tai rano ki fatarangi te ranga pa pa o mata. Wai ra ko ne te mihi ki koro i te tima tanga mai. Te na koro, te na te na koto ko fatarangi me na ke ko ne te ranga pa pa. So start off by acknowledging obviously Tariana. Uh, Dame Tariana and Sir Mason as the architects of Whanaora and also uh, Matua Whatarangi, if he's still here, of course is a special part of, uh, of the relationship with the Mighty Māori Party. Um, it's really pleasing to be here. This is my uh, uh, second hui uh, today on Whanaora. Just come back from Auckland. I had the privilege this morning of opening the Paumatakana Collective Impact Hui in Auckland. Uh, as, they, as we speak now, uh, they've got their hui going on uh, for two days up there. So it's from that hui uh, of well-being uh, of our whānau to this hui of well-being of our whānau. I want to say kanui te mihi thank you for being here. And I see other judges, uh, commissioners, important people throughout the motu here amongst the audience. And I can't uh, pick you all up. But for all of you being here, geez, awesome, pretty awesome coming through the back door and seeing you all uh, here uh, for this particular kaupapa. And it tells me that the importance of whānau water is definitely in the hearts and minds of people throughout the country. Just want to say, and I don't know what's been said in front of me or what's going to come up afterwards, but I started my quarter this morning to say, if Whana Water started with a scrap, it started with a scrap. A scrap with the government of the day to say that, actually, you know what? If you believe in our Fano, they can come up with the solutions themselves. It started with a scrap that people didn't believe that we can, communities can do stuff by themselves and make a good job of it. Started with a scrap about some money to put into it. Started with a scrap about trying a new approach that nobody had dared try prior to the arrival of Whanau Water. So Whanau Water didn't just drop from the sky and here we are, beautiful day. It actually came about from a lot of work. And that's why I pay tribute to Dame Tariana, to our staff at the time, uh, and Helen sitting here as one that sat beside her to form up Whanau Water. And over the time that we've had going on this kaupapa, it has evolved and changed to something that I think the country should be proud of. The downside is that we've still got to prove it that it's worth. We've still got to prove its value to the nation. So I want to tell you about some of that value because I've seen it with my own eyes and that's one of the privileges, the great privileges of being a minister and indeed a member of parliament, that you get to travel the motu and to talk to people and hear their stories, understand sometimes their pain, but also understand about their dreams and aspirations and what they want to do into their future. So, uh, as you know, Te Paumatakana is one of the three commissioning agencies that was set up almost three years ago to steer and implement uh, whānau water. One of Te Paumatakana's key initiatives is what's called collective impact. The agency funds 13 partnerships across the whole of the North Island, and it's just one of them. Uh, Te Pūtahitanga and, of course, Pacifica Futures are the other two. But the 13 partnerships that are a part of Te Ika Māori, the North Island Commissioning Agency through um, Te Pau Matakana, are all about delivering better outcomes for whānau. Collective impact is about communities identifying what their needs are and coming up with their own solutions to tackle their social problems. It acknowledges that we all have a part to play in supporting whānau to achieve their goals and aspirations. The 13 partnerships have 13 unique kaupapa that range from improving 
health literacy to improving uh, to increasing rangatahi engagement in education, training and employment, to improving housing conditions. And it's the latter one that I want to focus on just uh, for a little while. In November of last year, I had the privilege of launching the Māori Economic Development Plan for Manawatu uh, Whanganui titled Te Pai Tawhiti. The 25-year plan was led by Sir Mason Jury, by Tahia uh, Turia and Mavis Mullins. Of course, the plan has a strong whanawara focus. The overarching goals relate to the well-being of the people and the whenua, the land. At the launch, I had the opportunity to catch up with a lady by the name of Irina Mikaire Most, who happens to be the lead for Ngāti Rangi Collective Impact Project, which aims to create safer and warmer homes in the Ruapehu uh, Rohe. Ngāti Rangi is working with a heap of providers and partners from a range of organisations from Raitihi, Ohakune and Waiuru to create social change. As you know, I'm pretty passionate about Te Reo Māori, which leads me to look at their whakatauki. To me, their whakatauki perfectly describes collective impact for our people, for Māori people. It reads, Raranga hia te taura whiri tangata kia hua ai te marama. Bring people together to make a difference. And that's what they are. They are bringing people, many people together to make a difference. Ngāti Rangi are fortunate because they live in a small rural community. Nothing against small rural communities. Anybody from Nongota besides me here? Oh, no. Okay. So I come from a small rural community called Nongota. Ngāti Rangi's initiative addresses a community issue, a community-led approach that is supported by the community. It is not, about being, it is not being led by government. It is being led by Fano for whānau, which lies at the heart of whānau order. We know that the quality of housing has a big effect on the quality of health and well-being of whānau. I like to say, kāinga ora is a whānau ora. A healthy home makes a healthy whānau. The Ngāti Rangi Partnership is making homes safer and warmer and improving the well-being of tamariki, mokopuna and whānau. I just want to share one of the real stories in my discussions with the people up there. Picture this, a solar mum, four children living in a home that was pretty much a disaster waiting to happen. Half of the house had no electricity. It had a faulty hot water cylinder. It had power cords running through the house, some of which, some of which ran into the bathroom to light up a lamp so that they could see what they were doing at the bath time. The initiative completed an electrical, uh, electrical inspection, provided Fana with the information about electrical safety, purchased a new hot water cylinder, and a local electrician volunteered his time to restore power to the other part of the house. The safer home environment created a healthier, safer, more confident and cohesive whānau. The whānau are now working towards achieving their whānau plans. Let me share another example. Dad was terminally ill. Mum was the breadwinner, but on very low income. The tamariki had behavioural problems. They lived in an unsafe and unhealthy home that urgently needed repairs. They had sought help from a number of government agencies, but they were too busy, the government agencies that is, were too busy blaming each other and pointing the finger. The whānau then came to the attention of the Ngāti Rangi initiative. After initial engagement with the whānau, Ngāti Rangi called a hui. They pulled together the whānau, the agencies and the providers. It was the first time that everyone was together in the same room and they realised very quickly that no one, no one up until that point had actually asked the whānau what they wanted or bothered to listen to their response. They had made assumptions on behalf of the whānau, which meant that they were sharing inaccurate information, which led to the whānau being referred to the wrong services. Through whānau order, the whānau now has a solid plan in place that they have developed and agreed on. They meet fortnightly to review their progress and set new goals. 
This whānau has become so confident and independent that they are turning down offers to help from the initiative because in their own minds they now have the confidence to lead and plan the work for themselves. Mum and Dad are happier and less stressed. They can see the light at the end of the tunnel and the behaviour of the tamariki has improved greatly. Now, unfortunately, I don't have all afternoon to tell you all the other stories that I heard this morning and the ones that I've seen for my own self as I've travelled around. But if I just leave you with one more, which is probably not in that uh, pretty uh, sad state of affairs, but just to recall the, the Turner Fano from Narua here. The Turner Fano decided uh, when they got some money some years ago for the WE Fund that they wanted to look at the Fano order approach. So it shouldn't be just about the sad. It's got to be about those who want to really reach the heights of their after. They decided they want to do something about housing uh, and uh, also economic development as well as education. And at the heart of that was developing a plan. Part of the plan was to find themselves a house. They had the land, but they needed a house. The house that they built was put up and erected, probably all finished about a month ago, and I was happy to go up and launch it. There's one amazing thing about this house. It's nine bedroom. Uh, there are uh, koro and kui. There are, from memory, eight children and their partners. And you'll imagine there's a heap of tamariki and mokopuna. All of them live in this house. I had to scratch my head at the time thinking, how can a whole whānau, that many people live in a house in Narua here and get on? So I asked them about, well, what happens if partners fall out? They said, well, they haven't sort of solved that one. If the children fall out, it's easy. Just take the child to one of the uncles and aunties and then, okay, they look after them. But when partners fall out, oh, I don't know. When I was younger, they used to call that the dog box, uh, where you get sent to if you play up. And I also said, well, if one of the rooms is the dog box, then what about, what happens when you have to go and make up? Uh, that'll be the happy, happy box, I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> the happy house, the happy room. But they had, uh, uh, from memory, about five toilets, about nine showers. And speaking to the grandfather and the grandmother just a week ago, the first question I asked them was, have you had any scraps yet? And they said, no, not yet. It's all good. But you can come and check on us in another month or so, we'll tell you again. So it was a wonderful story because on top of that, they decided that they'd sell mussels, mussel fritters, at the Hamilton market to raise some money to go into their mortgages because they found nine children living everywhere were all paying rent, it was all going to somebody else. They decided to pull it to the middle and put it all into their house. So a part of that was to set up their business of mussel fritters at the Frankton markets in Hamilton. But they took it one stage further. They said, well, if the people of Waikato love their mussel fritters, we should export. So they're thinking about exporting mussel fritters. Well, <laughs> it's a new idea, but anyway, it's got merit, no doubt. <laughs> so if they can get it out of the country, good luck to them. Um, but on top of that, you know, just the simple things of setting up a room for all the tamariki to go to because they've got a computer hub sitting right there in their house. All the uncles and aunties will come and look after the tamariki so they can do their homework together. It was an amazing story, an amazing story. And why? Because they wanted to go to Narua here to look after their part as a family with the Kingitanga movement. They wanted to be close to the movement such that they could carry out their obligations. But that's, not, that's just one of the stories. I've been across the country lucky, in some cases not lucky, to hear the stories of some people. And I can tell you that I've sat in front of in one day, at least three families that have stood in front of me with their children and cried and cried and cried because of the work that whānau order navigators have made in their lives, such that even one year down the line, they still call those people whom they trust and absolutely believe in uncle and auntie. That's the impact of whānau order. That's what it's doing throughout the country, and we've got to do more in this space. Anyway, where was I? <laughs> So, as I say, whānau order is about putting the whānau at the centre, allowing them to control their lives and for providing kaimahi uh, to give them some support along the way. Now, there were four things that I aimed to do when I became Minister in the whānau order space some two and a half years ago. Firstly, it was to increase the reach and funding for whānau order, which I'm pleased to say we've achieved. 
with the injection of 50 million in budget 15 and 40 million in budget 16, it's my understanding that we've doubled the funding, which means that twice as many whānau are being supported. So that's pretty awesome, and I'm really pleased around that. Is it enough? Hell no, of course it's not enough. And we've got to do some more in that space to try and extend the reach. I can give you a guarantee that while the Māori Party is at the table with the government, regardless of that party, you can be assured that whānau water will continue to be a key government policy and will be resourced. The second issue I, raised, I wanted to uh, follow up on when I was, became Minister was to obtain mainstream funding from other gov government agencies and give it to the Final Water Commissioning Agencies. It seems to me that uh, sometimes the state has not necessarily delivered to Māori whānau and those who struggle from time to time. Now I understand that there have been challenges in the, ch in the MSD transfers from last year, but it's been done and will continue to advocate for more funding to be handed over into the final order space. The third thing I wanted to do was to look at how we might make our whānau aware of whānau order support to them, the support that's available to them. When you go to Bunnings, you know what you're going to get. When you go to Nike, key, Nike, <laughs> you can see a tick. When you go to McDonald's, it has the golden arches. So the question that I might put to all of those in whānau order is, should we have a tohu for whānau order? The purpose of a, of a tohu might be two things. Firstly, so that whānau know that whānau order support is being provided by a particular provider. And secondly, so that whānau know that they are, are being given a quality whānau order service. Just a thought. What this may also require is whānau order providers to be accredited to a commissioning agency. Food for thought. The fourth matter I wanted to address was the communications around whānau ora. E hoa as I said to the conference this morning, we have to do better in telling the story of whānau ora. Sharing those stories, sharing the stories of whānau that have had changes in their lives. Whānau stories are critical to the success of whānau ora. They describe the before, the during and the after. But more importantly, they share the whānau voice and their journey. So in conclusion, whānau order is about working together for a common kaupapa, the well-being of our whānau. It's about agreeing to disagree when you need to. That's okay. It's about sharing expertise and resources. It's about action. It sort of could describe the relationship between the government of the day and the Māori Party. Uh, sometimes we agree, sometimes we disagree. But in the end, we do get action. We sit at the table because one thing is for sure, left wing, right wing, is the same bird. <laughs> Just saying. 2017 is an important year. And it's when you get the opportunity to reconfirm support, I hope, for kaupapa like whānau order. It's your opportunity to support kaupapa that are developed, led and implemented by Māori. We know that mainstream agencies haven't necessarily worked for us, and neither have mainstream political parties, by the way. Whānau order is about being able to live as Māori and to be Māori. It's about us taking charge of our own lives and destinies. Whānau order is rangatiratanga in action, and I hope that you assert your rangatiratanga in September of this year. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. I hope that's contributed to your quarter. I look forward to the quarter that comes back. And can I thank Superu uh, Superu for uh, for co. What is it? Superu. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. Um, can I thank Superu, uh, all those involved, for pulling the conference together. I'm really looking forward to the outcome, such that we can continue. Uh, the movement of whānau water as it sits to develop it to kaupapa that the whole nation can finally be proud of. As I say, it started from a battle from scraps of understanding that we can do it a different way. It is going to be a part of pulling the whole nation together because whānau water is right for the whole nation. I leave with, that with you and look forward to the outcomes. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Thank you for having me.